Hi. In this Unity tutorial, I'm going to show you how to uh, make a character that leaves footprints behind. So I'm running this tutorial, uh, finished product here, and now I'm moving my character around with the keyboard, WASD, and behind him, he's leaving a trail of footprints. If I jump, the footprints only occur when he's like on the ground. Okay, so how did I do this? Um, first of all, the footprints are basically decals. And if you want to see my other tutorial I have here from my website, omarvision.com, I did a little tutorial on how to make a decal. A decal is basically just a, a quad game object. And then on that quad, I place a transparent picture. So the decals that I made here are one for the left foot and one for the right foot. And I could just throw them in the scene view here so you could see. It's basically, that's the left foot and this is the right foot. And if I just take a look, the, um, the parent object is, the, is an empty game object. And to that empty game object, I attached a script and the script just specifies a lifetime for the footprint to exist. Then as a child, I have the actual decal. And the decal, let's zoom in and take a look here. The decal, uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. I get undo move. I got to do it from this level. As you can see, the decal is just on a quad. A quad is an object that only draws on one side. So let me show you an example of a quad here. And by default, the quads are up and down like this. And what I had to do to my quad was on the x-axis, I rotated it by 90 degrees. So that's what these feet are. And what I had done was place the texture of a foot on the quad. And the texture is a sprite, which is a PNG that has some transparency. And then I just, you know, sized it on the quad, etc. So that's how I made the um, the decal for the foot. And then I just took each one, one with a picture of the right foot and one with a picture of the left foot, and I drag and drop them into the prefab window to make them in. I mean, I drag and drop them into the assets window to turn them into prefabs, like you see right here. So um, once they were prefabs, I don't need them in the scene, so I could delete them. Then what I had to do is I made a player object and the player is basically just a, a capsule. And the capsule, I just mapped the texture onto the capsule. And uh, you can see this guy is a face. So where I got a face texture from was I just went online and I just typed in face texture in Google and I got results of images. And I think I used one of these faces over here somewhere. The only thing is I, I took the face and then I just kind of drew over it kind of in Photoshop, like to cartoonerize it and, you know, make it my own. Now, when I put the face texture on, you notice that this blue arrow is my capsules forward direction. This is the forward direction on the Z axis. So I'd want his face to be looking forward. And um, to do that, because when I first put the texture on the face, the uh, forward wasn't there because by default it was zero. It was facing this way. So I just played around with the X and that was like what I, when I found out that 0.25 is when his face is pointing in the forward direction. And then over here with the Y, I also offset the texture, moving it up a little bit from the zero. Let me put it back to zero so you can see how it looked by default. Zero height. And there kind of has a big old head. So I just kind of played around with the, that and I just moved it up. I could even make him look bald. Okay. Um, but that's how I got the texture on the capsule, making it look like a face. Cool little trick. But uh, the main thing now is like we have the two decals for a left foot and a right foot. And I have a player. So I added a script for the player. Let's go to the script for player. 
Let's go, let's go. And right here, we have the script for player. I have an enum for the left foot or the right foot. Um, then I have some public variables right here. These are variables that show in the inspector window so that in the inspector I could set how fast my player moves, how fast he turns, um, the amount of strength in his jump, and the left prefab and the right prefab, and then the space between the footprints. So those are all the values you see here in the inspector. Okay, then internally I have some private variables that only the script could see. I don't show them in the inspector. I keep track of where the last footprint was placed over here. I just keep the position of the last footprint. And then I also keep track of which foot was it, the left or the right foot, for the last footprint. And um, I have a reference to the rigid body component of my player, which is right here. And you'd say, why do I have that? Well, because I have a jump. So I use the rigid body to do a jump. And then I have a boolean that tells me whether my player is touching the ground or not. So that way I could tell whether or not I should be putting footprints down or not. Because if I'm jumping and I'm in the air, I'm not going to draw any footprints. Okay, so these are all the variables. In the start function, I get a pointer to my rigid body component. And I spawn the first footprint, which he's going to start off with his left foot. And then therefore, I say that the last footprint, which is this left foot, equals where I am right now. Okay, so when I press play, the player's there, he kind of, I just draw the first footprint. And then in the update function, I am going to do the controls for movement. So over here, this is reading the input axis horizontal and the input axis vertical. For the horizontal, I'm going to take that value that's from minus 1 to 1, and I'm just going to turn the player. I'm just going to rotate on the y-axis. This is the y-axis coming up, and it'll just rotate, and that's turning the player. Then for the vertical axis, that's um, forward and backward. I'm just going to take that value of 0 to 1, uh, multiply it by the move speed, and he's going to move forward or backward. Mm -hmm. So being able to turn and being able to move forward or backward gets me around the screen. Then I have the uh, input get button fire 1 and touching the ground. So I can't jump if I'm in the air. I, have, I can only jump when I'm touching the ground. And the fire button is the left control, the left mouse button, or the joystick button X. And when I press jump, all I'm going to do is take the rigid body component of my player, and I'm going to add force in the upward direction, multiply it by the strength, and the type of force is a velocity change. Okay, so this moves my player and turns my player. If, if I press the jump button, then the player is going to jump up and gravity will bring them back down. Now, over here, this is where I'm going to do stuff about deciding whether I'm going to put a footprint down or not. So the first thing is, if I am not moving forward or backward, if move Z is 0, I'm not going to even go in here. So first got to check to say that move Z is not 0. So move Z comes from the vertical axis. And I make sure that I am touching the ground. I'm going to show you later where I set the value for touching ground to be true or false. But right now, it's like you have to be moving forward or backward, and you have to be touching the ground. Then I'm going to consider printing a footprint. Okay? So the first thing i got to do, since um, the footprints have space between each other, is figure out what the distance from the last footprint to where the player is. And I use vector3 distance for that. I just feed it the last footprint and my player's current position. That gives me a float value. So if that float value is greater than the footprint spacer that we specified here in the inspector window, if it's greater than 1, the footprint spacer, it's time to put another footprint. All I got to figure out is which footprint do I put. 
So if which foot equals left, I put a left footprint. I use spawn decal function to spawn a left footprint. And then I change which foot to right. Because the next time I come out, I'll use the right foot. If I come here and the, and the which foot equals the right, then of course I put a right footprint instead and change it to left. And so I could measure the distance between this new footprint and the next one. I keep track of this now as the last footprint position that the player is at now. So this little thing here is the thing that places the feet every one unit um, that the player moves. Now I'm going to use on collision enter and on collision exit to know if I'm touching the ground or not. So on collision enter is when my player touches something. If my player is touching the floor, the name of the objects is the floor, that's right here, the floor, then touching ground is going to equal true. And since on collision enter happens one time, it's not repeatedly happening. It's like I touch, there's an event, and then there's no more touching event because I'm already touching. So my player touches the floor, and I put a left and a right footprint. Okay, and I'm just doing the left and right footprint because I'm imagining he's going to touch the floor if he lands from a jump. And if he lands from the jump, I'm going to say he landed with two feet. So that's when I could tell if I'm touching the floor, just when I touch the floor. Then on collision exit means that um, I'm checking to see when he is not touching the floor. The moment he stops touching the floor, it's one moment. And at that moment, I say touching ground equals false. So with on collision enter and on collision exit, that's how I could tell if my player is touching the floor or not. So now for the actual spawn decal function, the thing that actually puts the decal on the floor. I took some liberties here. So this function is like simplified somewhat. And the liberty I took is that the ground is flat and it's always facing up. So when I put my decal of a footprint, it's always going to be flat and facing up. I don't have to calculate any angles or anything. So all I have to do is figure out where the ground is for my player. So I go um, for the swan decal. This prefab is going to be the left or the right foot decal, whichever one's being called. So first I want to create, um, I want to cast a ray from the player down to the ground so I could um, know where the ground is. And at that point where um, I touch the ground, that's where I want to put the footprint. So I use from, from is where the player is and to, is um, is where the player is in the X and the Z, but uh, half halfway down from the player, but a little bit off the floor. So this right here is the player's Y position, which if you look, if I click on the player, it's here like in the middle of the capsule halfway between the top and the bottom. I take that Y position, um, I divide it by two. Uh, so I go down halfway and that's at the bottom of the player. And then the bottom of the player should be touching the ground. Then I just come up a little bit from the ground. I don't want to be right at the same level as the ground because then what happens is there's like a little bit of a contest to see who's going to draw the ground or the foot so right here there's a foot and it's like above the ground let me just show you what i mean see like they're right in line with the ground over here okay but if the foot and the ground are right exactly at the same place it could be a contest between who's going to draw you don't know so all i do with that with that um, adding of a 0.1, a very small amount, is I make sure that the foot is above the ground and the foot draws itself, okay, above the ground, and it doesn't have a conflict. Okay. And then I just have to see which direction am I going to cast this ray from the middle down, and that's I just have to subtract the two vectors. Now I cast a ray um from the player in the direction of the ground and then 
I find out if that raycast hits anything and I get an out value for in the hit variable. So if I cast the ray down and it hits something, then hit is going to equal something. This um, raycast is going to return a true. Now I have hit is where I hit the ground. So I just spawn up a decal. I just instantiate the prefab. It's going to show up here in the inspector window, a new prefab. And uh, I just store that decal. And then I say decal position equals the point, the hit point, which is right where it hit the floor. And then I just have to rotate the decal so it matches the direction the player is moving. So, you know, what I mean by the rotate is like, say right here, this guy's face is facing forward here. And then there's a foot, the foot faces forward. Okay. But then say if the player, let me just rotate him a little bit is facing this way well then his foot's not twisted out that way the foot itself is going to have to also rotate to match the direction of the player so that's what this rotation is about okay so spawn decal it will spawn a decal on the floor right underneath the player rotated the right direction and the end result of all this when you put it all together is come on press play is that as I'm walking around, you can see I'm leaving little footprints and you can see them over here in the inspector window. And the footprints only last for a certain amount of time as they shrink away to nothing. So that's the only other script I have to show you is the script on the footprint. So let me just, oh, there was a footprint there already. Let's use this footprint right here and you can see I have a footprint script. So the footprint script has a value lifetime, and I said three for the lifetime, that's three seconds. So in the footprint script, just has the normal using statements. And um, here's the lifetime variable that shows in the inspector window. And I have a mark variable to mark a certain time, you know, a moment in time, and then I store what the original size of the footprint was. So here in the start, I recall the time that the footprint comes to life. I just get the time, I mark it. And then I also take the size of the footprint when it's created and I store the original size. Now in the update function that happens every frame as the game's going along, the update function is where I'm gonna actually shrink the footprint size. So what I figure out is how much time has elapsed since the footprint came to life. So time minus mark is elapsed time. And if the elapsed time is not equal to zero, that means I have to make sure about this because there is, a, um, is there a division somewhere? Well, maybe there was, but anyway, if the elapsed time is not equal to zero, that means time has elapsed. Um, I'm gonna do percent time equals lifetime minus elapsed time divided by lifetime. And that will give me the percent time left. Okay, a little bit of algebra there. Then I just take the scale of the footprint and I give it a new scale size. It's the original size times the percent of time left. So when the footprint is first placed on there, the time left is 100% time. The footprint will be 100% size. And then as the time goes by, and now 30% of the time has gone by, that means there's only 70% time left, the footprint will be 70% size. And as time goes on, the footprint gets smaller and smaller. At the moment when the elapsed time is greater than the lifetime, this footprint is time to destroy it. So I just destroy this game object, which is attached to the footprint, and it disappears from the inspector window. There you go.